Paper Aeroplane, Selected Poems, Updated Edition, by Simon Armitage, read by the author. This selection of poems, sampled from over 30 years of writing, is a representation of my poetic outlooks and attitudes since I first decided that the seemingly precarious activity called poetry offered a plausible living, by which I mean a means of existing and a way of life, or a system of belief. One way of thinking about these poems is as monologues, sketches or plays, taking place in the theatre of a book on the stage of the page. They are, by definition, makings and markings constructed in private, but designed as things to be commonly shared, in the hopeful expectation of having an audience of some kind. If you are listening to this, thank you for attending and, no matter how silently, for taking part. Paper Aeroplane From Zoom Snow Joke Heard the one about the guy from Heaton Mersey. Wife at home, lover in Hyde, Mistress in Newtonley Willows and two pretty girls in the top grade at Werneth Prep. Well, he was late and he had a good car, so he snubbed the police warning light and tried to finesse the last six miles of moorland blizzard. And the story goes he was stuck within minutes. So he sat there thinking about life and things, what the dog does when it catches its tail and about the snake that ate itself to death. And he watched the windscreen filling up with snow and it felt good, and the whisky from his hip flask was warm and smooth, and of course there isn't a punchline, but the ending goes something like this. They found him slumped against the steering wheel, with Volvo printed backwards in his frozen brow, and they fought in the pub over hot toddies as to who was to take the most credit, him who took the aerial to be a hawthorn twig, him who figured out the contour of his car, or him who said he heard the horn moaning softly like an alarm clock under an eiderdown. It ain't what you do, it's what it does to you. I have not bummed across America with only a dollar to spare, one pair of busted Levi's and a bowie knife. I have lived with thieves in Manchester. I have not padded through the Taj Mahal, barefoot, listening to the space between each footfall picking up and putting down its print against the marble floor. But I skimmed flat stones across black moss on a day so still I could hear each set of ripples as they crossed. I felt each stone's momentum spend itself against the water, then sink. I have not toyed with a parachute cord while perched on the lip of a light aircraft, but I held the wobbly head of a boy at the day centre and stroked his fat hands. And I guess that the tightness in the throat and the tiny cascading sensation somewhere inside us are both part of that sense of something else. That feeling, I mean. The bears in Yosemite Park are busy in the trash cans, grubbing for toothpaste, but the weather on Mam Tor has buckled the road into Castleton. A crocodile of hikers spills out into a distant car park as the rain permeates our innermost T-shirts, and quickly we realise this moment is one which will separate some part of our lives from another. We will always remember the mobile of seagulls treading water over Edale. Killer whales pair for life. They are calling across the base of the ocean as we sprint for the shelter of the Blue John Mine. We know the routine. In the furthest cavern, the lights go out and the guide will remind us that this is true darkness and these splashes of orange and bristling purple fibre are nothing but the echoes of light still staining our eyelids. Back in the car, we peel off our sticky layers and the stacks of rain are still collapsing sideways as we gear down into Little Hayfield, please drive carefully. On the radio, somebody explains, 
The bears in Yosemite Park are stumbling home, legged up with fishing line and polythene, and above the grind of his skidoo, a ranger curses the politics of skinny dipping. This is life. Killer whales are nursing their dead into quiet waters, and we are driving home in boxer shorts and bare feet.